Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I've got a let's play for you as we check out a new title called Strange Brigade. Did I say let's play? I of course mean let's benchmark. Before I get to the loads of results that I have for you, what is Strange Brigade and why am I benchmarking it? I have to admit until a few weeks ago I'd never actually heard of this game. Although it was announced ahead of E3 2017, I personally hadn't caught wind of it until recently when AMD announced their Raise the Game uh, bundle, which is a game bundle they include with the Radeon RX Vega series, the RX 580 and even the RX 570. In case you're unaware, the game bundle includes three upcoming games, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Star Control Origins, and Strange Brigade. The promotion's currently active and it will run until the 3rd of November 2018, and it's valid for those purchasing one of the aforementioned Radeon graphics cards via direct add-in board sales, OEMs, and system integrators. As for Strange Brigade, well, in short, it's a cooperative third-person shooter developed and published by Rebellion Developments. The co-op mode supports four players and puts them in roles of 1930s-era Tomb Raiders. I suppose think Indiana Jones. The story goes something like this. There is an ancient and long-dead Egyptian queen, Setiki, who's been raised from the dead by some evil ritual. In addition to Queen Setiki's revival, mummies, zombies, minotaurs, and giant Egyptian gods populate the land. There's loads of killing using conventional means, such as guns and grenades, but characters have access to magical powers, which help to obliterate the baddies more efficiently. The action's also broken up a bit by puzzles that often involve shooting, moving, breaking, or otherwise interacting with the environment. I've played for about an hour all up now, and even solo, it's just a heap of fun. So I imagine with friends, it's going to be pretty amazing. Anyway, this video is more about hardware performance, so let's talk about that. And I've spent about 48 hours playing the same section of the game over and over again now. So yeah, that's my idea of fun. I know, I'm a simple man. The game supports DirectX 12 and Vulkan. And we'll be kicking off the testing by comparing the Radeon and GeForce GPUs using either API, and then we'll go from there. Strange Brigade does include a demanding built-in benchmark, which I found to deliver frame rates that were at least 15% lower than the most demanding section of the game that I ran into uh, within the first hour of gameplay anyway. Normally I'd go for the more demanding test, but both AMD and Nvidia GPUs suffered a bit of stuttering during the built-in benchmark, and this really hurt frame time performance. And this is an issue I never actually saw when just playing the game. So I decided to measure performance using a manual 60 second in-game pass and reported the average and 1% low result. For the most part, I will be using the ultra quality preset and testing takes place at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. I'll also be enabling async compute, which improves performance for the Radeon GPUs by about 5% and then just a couple of percent for the GeForce GPUs. And I will look at those numbers towards the end of the video. The game also supports AMD's FreeSync 2 HDR technology, but that isn't something that we'll be testing in this video. As usual, I'll be using my GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X and comprises of a Core i7 8700K clocked at 5GHz with 16GB of Vengeance DDR4 3400 memory. For the GeForce GPUs, the 398.82 WHQL driver was used, and for AMD, the Radeon Adrenaline 18.8.2 driver, which is an optimized driver for Strange Brigade. So please note, we are testing the game with a game-ready driver from AMD, but not from Nvidia. So it is possible the green team might see a performance uplift with a future driver release, though performance does appear pretty spot on as you're about to see. Okay, so before we get too far into it, let's compare the DirectX 12 and Vulkan performance using a few select AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Whichever API offers each team the best performance is the API I plan to use for that particular team. And as you can see here, DirectX 12 looks to get the nod, at least at 1080p. The GTX 1080 Ti is 11% faster using DirectX 12, and we see an even larger performance uplift for the standard 1080. The performance is more even with the RX Vega GPUs, but even here Vega 64 was 6% faster using DirectX 12, and we see much the same with Vega 56 as well. Even at 1440p, we see that DirectX 12 offers the Radeon GPUs a slight performance bump, while the GeForce GPUs enjoyed a rather significant performance increase. I should also note that AMD provided me with some of their own numbers, and they also confirmed that both AMD and Nvidia GPUs offer greater performance across the board using DirectX 12. 
Finally, at 4K, performance is much the same for the Radeon GPUs using either API, so at this extreme resolution, it doesn't really matter too much which API you use if you have a Vega graphics card. However, GeForce owners will certainly want to stick with DirectX 12 as it offered an 18% increase for the 1080 Ti and 24% for the standard 1080. Okay, so that settles it. I'm going to conduct all further benchmarks in this video using DirectX 12 as it offers the best results for both Radeon and GeForce owners. Of course, I will continue to monitor the performance of both APIs in the future, but if you see us using DirectX 12 exclusively for Strange Brigade, then you'll know why. It's because it offers better performance. Just quickly, here's a look at the impact async compute has by testing with it enabled and disabled. As you can see, the Radeon GPUs receive a 5% performance boost, while the GeForce GPUs only see a 2% boost. In either case, not massive, but I suppose every bit does help. Right, so here are 20 current generation AMD and NVIDIA GPUs tested at 1080p using the DirectX 12 API and the ultra quality preset. So if you're hoping to enjoy Strange Brigade in all of its glory and keep frame rates above 60 FPS at all times at 1080p, what kind of hardware are you looking at? Well, for that, you'll want at least a Radeon RX 570 or GTX 1063 gigabyte, which I have to say is very reasonable. Both pushed an average of around 90 FPS in our test and a 1% low figure of over 60 FPS. So that's most impressive. We also see similar performance from the Radeon RX 580 and six gigabyte GTX 1060. For low end models such as the RX 560 and GTX 1050, you will likely want to reduce the quality settings just a little bit and we will explore that later in the video. I'll also include a whole heap of older generation GPUs as well using the medium quality settings. For now though, let's move to the 1440p results and have another look at the current generation GPUs. Even here, the mid-range GPUs still provide very playable performance. But for high refresh rate gaming, you will want at least a Vega 56 or GTX 1070 graphics card. The leap from the GTX 1080 to the 1080 Ti is a massive 35%, and we saw both the 1080 Ti and Titan X destroy Vega 64 Liquid. Vega 56 was at least competitive with the GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti, so that's something. Then at 4K, you really need the GTX 1080 Ti, and I have to say the experience was very impressive. 91 FPS on average at 4K, you don't really see that too often, especially in a game that looks as great as Strange Brigade. Gameplay really was incredibly smooth, as you'd expect with a 1% low result of 75 FPS. It's possible in other sections of the game that the frame rate will drop lower. Uh, the inbuilt benchmarks certainly suggest that, but I can't imagine you'd be getting anywhere near unplayable levels. So Strange Brigade certainly appears very well optimized, so let's move on to see how the previous generation GPUs handle it. For those of you rocking a previous generation GPU, you still can look forward to some pretty solid performance when playing Strange Brigade. At 1080p using the ultra quality preset, the R9 390 beat out the GTX 970 to deliver 88 FPS on average, opposed to 81 FPS. Interestingly, the R9 390X really wasn't much faster than the non-X model, and while edged ahead of the GTX 980 for the average frame rate, the frame time performance was much lower. Jumping to 1440p, and here we see the GTX 970 and R9 390 are still getting it done, but ideally gamers will want a GTX 980 or better. It's very interesting to note that AMD's R9 Nano does much better than the GTX 980, while the Fury range isn't that far behind the GTX 980 Ti. Of course, you can overclock the GTX 980 Ti for a further 20% performance boost, but still, for stock results, the Fury doesn't look too bad here. Then at 4K, we see, while playable, the previous generation flagship GPUs really aren't going to cut it for 4K gaming. That said, we're used to seeing the 4GB HBM Fury and Nano GPUs absolutely tank at 4K, but here they actually beat the GTX 980 Ti by a reasonable margin, so that's certainly a surprising result. And finally, time to break out the magnifying glass for all you mobile phone viewers. If you've got an 85-inch TV, this graph might contain some useful data. What we have here are all the current and previous generation GPUs lumped together at 1080p. If you'd like to go over this data more thoroughly, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look. Then we have slightly fewer GPUs at 1440p as the entry level models have been dropped due to extremely low frame rates. So this graph is slightly easier to read without a projector. Again, if you want to study the graph a bit closer, feel free to hit the pause button. Then at 4K, we've weeded out the slow coaches 
and now we have just 23 GPUs to check out. That said, if you're after a smooth 4K experience, your options are very limited. Moving on here is a quick look at scaling performance using the four quality presets with the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB and Radeon RX 580 8GB at 1440p. We've already seen how these GPUs perform using the ultra quality settings, but here we are able to drop down to the high preset and that does boost both GPUs by an additional 10%. Then the medium quality preset allows for an additional 24% performance boost and then the low a further 22% increase. So those with lower end GPUs certainly have plenty of wriggle room to boost up those frame rates. Oh, and before I forget, here are the old bangers along with a few current and previous generation mid-range and entry level options using the medium quality preset at 1080p. Here we have 17 very old GPUs mixed in with 13 current and previous generation GPUs. Down the bottom of the graph, we see the GeForce GTX 580 mixing up with the GT 1030. That's pretty crazy to see. The old Radeon R9 290 smashed the GeForce GTX 780 Ti, though the GTX 780, R9 280X, and HD 7970 are all comparable. There's a few other graphics cards in there to have a look at, so again, if you want to take a closer look, just feel free to pause the video and, well, take a closer look. Well, I hope that helps those of you who are wondering how well Strange Brigade would run on your PC. Frankly, I'm really impressed with what we've seen here. The game appears to be very well optimized, and it's not just well optimized for AMD hardware, but also NVIDIA hardware, which is great to see from an AMD sponsored title. In fact, this is becoming somewhat of a common trend, I have to say, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed that every game AMD has a hand in developing turns out to be extremely well optimized, and not just for AMD hardware, but for NVIDIA hardware as well. And basically to enjoy this game in all of its glory at 1080p and push over 60 FPS at all times, or at least for the most part based on our little benchmark pass, all you need is an RX 570 or GTX 1063 gigabyte. Coincidentally, if you just so happen to be in the market for a new mid-range GPU and happen to want to play Strange Brigade and are also keen on Star Control Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, then AMD's Raise the Game bundle couldn't have come at a better time. Right now, the RX 570 is priced at $200 US, which isn't a bad deal given the GTX 1063GB is currently selling for around $220 US. Better yet though, throw in $130 US worth of games and you end up paying just $70 US for the graphics card, assuming you plan on buying all three titles that is. Uh, still, even if you were to only buy one of these titles, it's still a pretty solid deal. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell you on an RX 570 graphics card. I'm Sure, it sounds like it, but I'm not, or any Radeon graphics card for that matter. I just think that it's a really good deal, and if all of the stars were to align for you, then yeah, it's an extremely good deal. Anyway, if I can't sell you on a Radeon graphics card, how about a Ryzen CPU? I kid, of course, but AMD did point out that Strange Brigade includes Ryzen optimizations, something that we will test at a later date. The game's compiled using Microsoft Visual Studio 2017, which contains optimizations and improved code for modern processors like Ryzen. Additionally, multi-threaded command buffer generation accelerates rendering by distributing work onto multiple logical processors. AMD says as a result, gameplay is virtually indistinguishable from competing processors from Intel. Again, I will compare AMD and Intel CPUs in this title at a later date, but for now, based on what I saw with the 8700K, it's fair to say that this isn't a really CPU demanding title anyway, so it may not be particularly good for benchmarking AMD and Intel CPUs. Perhaps though, that will change in the later stages of the game. It may become more demanding there, or perhaps with more players. But before I get a chance to play any more Strange Brigade or any other games for that matter, I really need to finish the Corsair 1000D build, aka Coffee Ripper. As you can possibly see here, I don't know if it's in shot of the camera very well, but I've installed both the 360mm front radiators and all 16 fans, so that's quite impressive. And then I've got the uh, 400, I think it is 420mm radiator uh, in the top. so. That's there. I've only got two fans, but I'll explain that in the video. Uh, and then I've got the blocks installed. I'm about to do the graphics cards. They're floating around somewhere. Anyway, that video was meant to land today or tomorrow. I've obviously postponed that because I started benchmarking on Friday and benchmarked all throughout the weekend to get this video done in time for Monday. So you've got that to look forward to. It's going to be a pretty awesome build and I'm excited to get into it. 
As for this video, if you did enjoy it, feel free to hit the like button for us, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and if you appreciate what we do at Harrow Unboxing, maybe you could consider supporting us on Patreon, you get access to our monthly live stream and Discord chat where Tim and myself are always hanging around and up for a chat. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching, I'm your host Steve, and I suppose I'll see you again soon. Or at least I hope I will. Come on, come back, subscribe, like, thanks.